Well, now it kind of looks like this. As a matter of fact, it looks exactly like this. It's about 3 sixteenths of an inch across the flats. I knocked the burrs off. Stuck the head back on. Now, don't put the heads on permanently yet. Well, of course, we have to make the piston yet, but don't put the head on yet because, uh, well, you'll see why. And I put the stud in there. It's not held in with Loctite yet, but it, it will be. And from your selection of springs or what you have down at your hardware store, you need a, a spring, kind of a light wire, so, almost something like a ballpoint pen spring might, might do. And I'm going to cut this off so it's one inch long. Like that. And believe it or not, I had some 540 brass nuts, but where the heck are you going to find those? And you can put that on like that. And you might use a washer here, but I don't think you need one, but possible. Or perhaps you want to make a, a, a little knurled nut there that has better appearance. Do anything you want. And that's the pivot point. So we're making a little progress, aren't we? Might even have it running in a few days. There needs to be oil in there. But the spring gives it tension against there, you see. And you don't want too much and you don't want too little. And that's the purpose of the adjustment screw, or adjustment nut rather. Okay, I'm going to tackle the piston next and then the piston rod. But before I do that, I believe I'll go ahead and make this little part here. And I never did think of a name for that, but it's the end of the connecting rod that goes onto the, uh, the pin here. And we'll start with, uh, well, what is that? 3 16 stock. We'll put a step in it, drill and tap a hole, and we've got to have a cross hole in it. I think I misspoke. This is actually quarter inch diameter, this little piece. So, start with quarter inch rod. And I spend a lot of time looking for things around here, even though I got about everything I need. It takes me a long time to find it, even though I am semi organized. But you need to drill that eighth inch hole right here accurately so it's perpendicular and so it doesn't run off to the side. And it's truly on center. So I made this jig a long time ago, this little drill jig, and it could be made out of square stock. I just used hex, I suppose, <clears throat> because that's what I had. And it was easy to, to, to uh, center it here in a three-jaw chuck. But that's a quarter-inch hole, and I can drill either a five thirty-seconds or an eighth-inch cross hole with this, and it will be accurate. Uh, I made this accurately. If you don't make one of these accurately, you're, you're not going to have an accurate hole, but I'll hang a little bit out here, a little extra to trim if necessary, and I, I would much rather trim it than end up short, that's why I make a big deal out of that. Here's an eighth inch bit, so I'll just put this in the drill press vise, drill right through it, and I'll have a perfect cross hole, and then we'll take it from there. That didn't take long. As you can see, that's longer than what I need there, but it gives me a little extra to, to chuck. So I'm going to cut it off here, and then uh, turn it down the step. And the overall length of that piece is to be uh, one half inch, so I'll cut this off a little bit longer, because I'm going to trim this off right here. I turn this end down to 3 16 diameter, that's .187. And it is quarter inch long. Now I'm going to put it back in the chuck, drill that hole, and tap it 1 4th 20. And I'll probably drill the hole all the way through or until it breaks, breaks into that, or, or not quite, it doesn't really matter. And then while it's in the lathe, tap it 540. Then I will reverse it, and I'm going to do this off camera like this, hold it like this, and trim it to length right about to my thumbnail there, just so it looks good. 
dimension isn't real critical but for those of you that want to know right here it'll be probably about uh, 3 eighths that will just take a minute put a little chamfer around that end and on the other side just kind of finishes it off and makes it makes it look a little bigger a little better rather that's what it looks like by the way you can make this out of square stock too like square key stock and it, it, it'll look real good uh, I ran a number 30 drill through here just to free it up that was just a little bit tight and you don't want you don't want it to bind on there so I got now I get just a little bit of wiggle with the number 30 and uh, that's just the way I want it and it's threaded in the end and that piece is ready to go and you can waste not waste it takes 15 minutes to make that but I guess that's the pleasure of it next I'm going to tackle the piston now the piston uh, can be made of different materials. It can be made of steel. The only objectionable thing about steel, if you're if you're running it on steam, is possibility. Well, it is going to rust and possibly bind when you let it set uh, for periods of time. Do not make it out of brass because really it ought to be a dissimilar material. So I'm going to make it out of aluminum. This is just half inch aluminum rod, and I'll only make it a quarter inch long. It doesn't need to be very long because it is supported. Uh, the shaft is supported by this so it can't wobble in there and I will drill well this is already drilled maybe I can just tap it if it's a if it's a good hole that's on center and uh, again 540 thread and cut it off and if I need to polish it I'll polish it while it's on the piston rod and I'll champ for both ends Okay, now make sure when you assemble this that uh, you don't put it in a dry hole. And you need a good fit right here. No binding. So when I bring that up into place here, I now have quite a good fit. Not too tight, not too loose. Latrec. If you lack concentricity here in this hole, it will bind. I guarantee it. So you may need to remake that and make it carefully. And if you cannot achieve that, the uh, alternate is to start with a slightly larger piece and then turn it down to the right diameter, holding this in a collet, probably not a three-jaw chuck unless you've got a perfect one, but if you hold that in a collet, and take that down to 500 thousandths or 499 then concentricity is guaranteed and I hope you understand what I mean by that and but possibly some of the younger guys won't understand that but look up that word concentric now I need to determine the length of the piston rod and uh, to uh, thread it Look at how I've assembled this now without uh, the back piece here. And the piston comes up almost to the port. So I will take a marker now and mark this where I'm going to cut it off. It needs to be all the way in, in that position. I'm going to cut it off right there and then I'm going to thread it a little bit extra long probably up to about there and some of my final length and location can then be uh, adjusted with the thread so that's what I'll do off camera now cut and thread I have now successfully uh, cut to length and uh, threaded the piston rod so watch what I mean by the adjustment the final adjustment and if if you cut this wrong you need to make a new one but with the crankshaft in the back position as far as it'll go this way toward my finger notice that the port here can you see that that porthole is showing now as I move it into the forward position As such, you can also see now 
that that porthole, now that's where the steam or the air will enter. Now if you cover one or the both, uh, you know, during that stroke, then you need to probably reduce the thickness of the piston. And I told you I made a 5 16 thick piston and I had, a, I believe in the other one, it was only a quarter inch if I remember correctly. Now, I do not have uh, this piece in place. And before I Loctite this, I'm going to put this into place, then remeasure it, and uh, I'm still not going to Loctite this or the head into place at this time, but this is the guide here, or the back head. Also make sure that whatever the length of this little uh, part right here, it, it doesn't cover the uh, steam hole and block it. And if so, an adjustment needs to be made, or even a little recess could be milled into this. So. Take care to do all of that. And I do have, I, I told you I had a good fit on the piston, so that's ready to go. So that's what I'm going to do next off camera is to go ahead and Loctite that. Now comes one of the most critical parts of the whole engine, and that is to drill the steam passages in here. And they don't really show up on, on this one because they're hidden by the manifold. But there has to be a way for the steam or the air to get into the pistons. So, piston. So watch how I do this. Now, if Tolly makes the drawing, and I think he will, there's going to be uh, dimensions for that. But I have always done this by, the, uh, by this method rather than by blueprints, because I don't have blueprints, but he, he'll make them up for you. But what I will do is to transfer them. And even if you have the dimensions, maybe you ought to use this method because you just can't miss. There isn't any possibility of an error if you do it by this method. You need to make yourself a tiny little transfer punch. Now that's a piece of 3 16 steel, and I put a point on it. That's all I did. And it is uh, less than a half inch in length, and you'll see why. And... Uh, we're going to transfer the holes. Now, I will take a little pliers here. This is kind of awkward. And I will insert it into this hole. Point down, of course. Like that. Can you see that? Now, I can't hit that with a hammer, can I? So what I'll do is I'm going to get this at the six o'clock position like that and then I'm going to take a pair of pliers oh, that's too fat and wide let's see what we got here that might work right there you see that in the six o'clock position I'm going to pressure it a little bit. Now I'm going to move this to the 12 o'clock position. It won't go that way because it's going to hit the... twelve o'clock high. A good movie if you've never seen it. And the same thing here. but not so hard that you might bend the brass back here, the sheet brass. Now I'm going to take that off and, and show you how I did it, or what they look like, I should say. It isn't possible to do that on the back end because the piston rod is in the way. So I'm going to show you an alternate way of doing that, but let's take a look at this real quickly and see if, if those uh, are visible. And there they are. There's one mark right there. I'll center punch them a little deeper. 
and another one right there. And they certainly are close together and I think I mentioned that 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 can be a problem but you can see the two little center part punch marks that I have transferred. Now let me show you how to do them on the other side which is a little more difficult. Get a nice sharp scriber and if you want to put some more layout die on, on the brass here but I don't think it's necessary but we're at six o'clock again and I'm taking the scriber and I'm scribing it right here and you can do the same thing down here but probably redundant so I've scribed the line and the same thing here I'm gonna go up into the I still got that transfer punch in there I need to take that out but I'm done with that on that side that end I gotta struggle with that just a little bit off camera let me get that up to the 12 o'clock position as such and I'm gonna scribe it here I won't even bother on the top. Yeah, I will too. Okay. Now I'm going to take it apart again. Now watch this. I already have the little transfer punch in there. Can you see? And this is the back end of the cylinder. I put just a little bit of a witness mark on there with a the file. So that will always go toward the crankshaft because it may not be the same in both directions so I want to re always reassemble it the same now I'll put it in there as such but before I do can you see oh say can you see the scribe line at an angle there And at the top, well, that one isn't very visible going the other way, but I guess I can see it. Yeah, I can see it. So we got crisscross lines like that. And what I'm going to do here is looking at the line or looking for that, that layout line, I'm going to get it right on the line. You're not going to be able to see that. Hold that with my thumb and get the pliers and mark it and then move it up on the other line. Mark it. Now you might say, well, it's easier to do it with uh, a drawing. Well, then do it that way. But also, if, you could, if I could get a little spring tension against that transfer punch and just rock it back and forth, you'll see an arc scribe down there but okay I'll do that off camera because it is a bit awkward I took my automatic center punch and repunched them boy those two are dangerously close to the edge aren't they that's a little better over on that side but now I'm going to take it on the drill press and put a piece of wood under there like that and I'm going to drill all four of them one sixteenth and you say oh well why one sixteenth these are three thirty seconds because that's just a, a method I adopted on one of the earlier ones now you you can drill them three thirty seconds probably would be a better flow of steam but uh, it, it'll work fine this way and that way they're not so close together because you'll see when I even after I drill those sixteenth of an inch uh, the, the two holes are quite close together and there's a little bit of interference later on when I try to put the uh, the manifold or, or a little uh, pipe extensions tubing on there that, it, that it's a bit awkward so I'm gonna make them 16th and I'll do that off camera I spent just a few minutes polishing here nothing fancy I used Loctite on this stud so that's in for life I hope now I'm doing the final assembly here, so I'm going to put some Loctite on this, put her together, then some Loctite on the head. Be very careful that you use a minute amount of this so that it doesn't get in there on the piston, because I guarantee you your piston's not going to move. And also, 
when you use Loctite, you have to make sure that it's oil free, which is no easy job considering I told you not to put this thing together without oil. So I will Loctite this and this and then make sure that I assembled it according to my little witness mark here, yeah. And uh, that will conclude that part. So I'm probably about 90% done with this engine now. It's really coming together nice. So with that in mind, then I'm also going to take this off and polish it just a little bit with emery cloth, but only to about the finish you see here. And I have no intentions of doing anything with the inside. If I had intended to, I would have pre-done that, but that'll just be that original finish. And I think that's the varn. Well, one side of this kick plate was varnished. I, and it was probably this side. No, I guess it was the outside. But that'll be cleaned up, and I won't even do the bottom. And uh, then it's ready to deal with the inlets over here. I'll take a lunch break after I do that. This is how I made the manifold. I started with quarter inch round uh, brass, and I suppose I could have used square. But I, to start with, drilled an eighth inch hole in it. And I went in about uh, three inches. I used an extra long drill bit. And that was while it was still straight. Then, after the hole was drilled, I proceeded to bend it in this uh, little bending jig here to get uh, that radius which is just bogus and bagosh. Then I took it to the milling machine just now and I milled a flat on it. And the purpose of the flat is uh, so that I can solder it onto the engine. Then it will, next I will cut it off to length and uh, hopefully it will fit Well, I gotta, I gotta do it backwards here for now, because it's not cut off. But we'll fit right there and go around the pivot point. And this pivot point here is the whole problem. Now comes one of the more difficult parts of this, uh, even though it's uh, the grand finale. There has to be some way to connect the two intake ports together. Now the exhaust ports do not matter, they can just exhaust into the atmosphere any old place. But in order to connect them, I made a manifold on this engine, but it's got so many holes in it and it's, it's too difficult to explain and I don't expect any beginners to be able to do this and it's soldered on there, but yet I guess the way that I'm going to do it here in a few minutes isn't going to be much easier, but here's the way I recommend that I made a lot of different engines, but when they're double acting you have to connect the two of them. Well, here's just a little loop of, uh, of aluminum tubing connecting the two and then there's some ports drilled and then this is the inlet. Is that clear as mud? Same thing on this one. The two are connected together, but if you try to run these on steam, the vinyl tubing isn't going to work. That's just vinyl tubing. And then uh, there, there's the inlet. And in some others, it even gets more complicated where I have holes drilled and then plugged. So everything is internal on this one. And it's, uh, it's just too hard to explain it to. And you don't need to do it that way. This is probably the way you need to do it, is to have two little uh, tubes coming out of there. Forget about that. Two little tubes. Put a T in here and the inlet will be right in between here. If you don't follow what I'm going to do here on this, uh, this next step.